In our world, being in the middle is sometimes considered a bad thing. It means that you might always get a third place trophy. It means that you might never sit at the table with the cool kids, and it means that at day's end, you might only marry a seven. However, we're here to tell you that sometimes being in the middle is exactly where you wanna be. The internet will tell you that you must go above and beyond. You must have the best of the best and that if you don't have X amount of dollars in your car, then you're doing it wrong. I'm here to tell you that's not the case. What we're driving today is a 1965 Malibu SS. And if you were to listen to the internet, it'd be a solid medium. It has an LS1 small block with about 500 horsepower a T56 tranny out of a Viper, some suspension bits by Global West, and some big old Willwood brakes. Now, is it the best of anything? No, it's not. You could have put an LS9 in here. We could have some insane rear end, and we could have some crazy 15-inch rotors with two pot calipers and 12 pistons, or whatever you want, but we don't. We have tried and true parts, proven parts, that make up a car that is very, very nice to drive. I really, really like the balance of this car. It, it feels correct. It's not overpowered. The tires, the wheels, the brakes, everything works. Now, the owner, Gil, he'll tell you flat out, yeah, it's a nice car. It runs good and it handles pretty well. And every now and then I take it to the track and I autocross it. But he underrates what he's actually done because to build a good car, a good medium car, takes more skill than you could even think about. Original car, it was gold, it was all original. I just got it from a customer that didn't want to work on it anymore, so I bought it from him. And researching parts and this all came together for me. The newer cars, the way I look at it, everybody can buy one. No one can go out and just build an old car and go out on the track with it. I can go out and buy a brand new Porsche and go out and run it like everybody else, but it's not my personality into the car, so I have more fun doing my own car, put my personality into it, and taking it out against the newer cars. So in this day and age, it's real easy to go online and order a big block crate motor. It's easy to order a straight cut set of gears, and it's easy to order, you know, a set of brakes that are six piston with 17 inch rotors, and you know, we'll send you through the windshield at any given moment. What's hard about ordering all that stuff is trying to get it to work together. Very few cars with that much power and that much tech and that much overkill actually function properly. You don't need 800 horsepower. You need something 300, 350 horse to run around the street to get used to a car to find out what you have. But a lot of people want a lot more than they need. Plan a car out properly though, with the right parts. Spend the time and do your due diligence to get those parts to work correctly together. And what do you have? Something that is wonderful. Okay, so now that we've surmised that Gil has bought the correct parts for his car, let's talk about how they work. Okay, so the LS1, it's been tuned to make around 515 to 520 horsepower, which is, in a car that weighs around 3,200 pounds, more than you'll ever need. It's enough power where you can not only utilize what you have, but you can grow into and really start to enjoy what it has. Eventually you'll get to the point where you can use 100% of that and feel confidence about doing that. Doing that with something that's eight or 900 horsepower, 
is next to impossible because one, you're petrified of the car, and two, you're always worried that it's gonna blow up. One of the things that I really enjoy about this car and what Gil did to the motor is, it is not traditional. Meaning, is it an LS1? Yes, but you pop the hood and what do you see? Oh, an air cleaner. And you see a carburetor, right? And you see the distributor that's in the front. What? Guess what, it's not a Ford motor. It's a Chevy motor, so don't freak out when you see the distributor in the front. Just go to the GM parts catalog and you see it's available. The tranny in this car is a T56 out of a Viper. It has very tall gears. With the T56, the third gear is geared to a point where I can cruise around town or I can lay into it. And run up to triple digit speeds. Is it the hardest edge thing I've ever driven? No, not by a long shot. But one of the things Gil has done is he put some really good tires on this thing. He's got Toyo Triple A's, which are about 150 tread wear or so, and they really do grip the road. He's got 255s up front with 275s in the rear, and pitching it into a corner, dropping a gear and accelerating out, does nothing but expire confidence in this car. Again, try that in an 800 horsepower car, and the only thing you're gonna be doing is watching your sphincter go wobble. You don't want that in a car. Now the brakes are manual, which a lot of people don't like. I can jump on these, the combination of the, you know, the two-piece rotors with the Wilwood calipers, and they feel pretty good. The steering in this is not bad. It's not, if you've ever driven in like kind of a stock old muscle car, right, you've got this crazy slop. This box is not stock. It's been tightened up. You could feel it. You get some communication with what the wheels are doing. Everything that goes into building a vintage car is about feel. It's about sound, style, and execution. The interior, for example, is so simple, yet so well done with subtle touches that it makes me want to go back and redo the interior in my own cars. The door panels and seating surfaces have all been beautifully stitched in leather, while the headliner and A-pillars are clad in Alcantara. And the stainless trim, that's all been polished to a beautiful shine and looks stunning. When he did the dash on this car, he was looking how to integrate the top level leather into the black steel painted lower portion of the dash. These chrome pieces you see right here were added to the cars. They're not a factory piece. And it's those little touches that set a car apart. Everything was thought out and put together in such a fashion that what he has right now is a very good car that's a joy to drive anytime you want. This car is just as comfortable driving from San Francisco to LA as it is going to an autocross, as it is going to the supermarket. Think of an M3, right? Does everything well. Is it a hard-edged, rock-solid, you know, track car? No, it's not. Is it a kind of just a soggy lump? No, it's not. It's a performance car that was built to fulfill every need you could possibly throw at it. That's exactly what this car does. This is a 1965 BMW M3 by Chevrolet. Reliability, comfort, style, presence, personality, full package, medium for the win. It's a seven. Absolutely. This is a seven, and it's a glorious seven. When people think perfectly fine, they think bad. When perfectly fine, it's, it's some of the best things you can have. You know what's perfectly fine? A ham and Swiss sandwich, perfectly fine. You know what's perfectly fine? A Budweiser, a cold Budweiser. That is perfectly fine. The over medium egg, totally fine. Why is that totally fine? Because when you cut it open, it runs just enough to give you that nice yolky flavor, but it doesn't cover everything to where all your taste is. Good.